Maybe uh, the freedom is the spirit of our family. I think that it was catastrophic loss for Andrei. And at this moment, I think that uh, he felt the need to continue the, this uh, mission of his brother. I must to be like a co-worker <laughs> with him. You were partners in crime. Yeah, of course. <laughs> day by day, uh, he returned home and told, I passed it, I passed it. And next, and next, mom, all is finished, I am a cadet. Many times he told, to repeat, to talk to the generals that we need to, to modify something, to change our conditions, to make it similar to Western conditions of uh, um, military service for pilots. Our post-Soviet generals um, prevent their um, modern activity and this improvement it was uh, like a dream for them. And he, exactly at this time, uh, he was named Juice. What I want to do in memory of my son, to feel what he wanted to feel, uh, to be in this, uh, in this fighter jet to, and to start uh, to fly. So I need to do uh, this flight uh, instead of him, in memory of him to continue his life. He was not the usual son. Um, he was uh, like a friend, collaborator. His activities must be continued uh, now. It's very important for our struggle, for our victory. Hello. I'm Jenny Klochko, and you're watching my podcast. Today in Kiev, I meet Lilia Viryanova, mother of known pilot Juice, the person I was honored to know. Hello. Hello. Thank you for the invitation. Um, Mrs. Viryanova, I would like uh, to start our conversation with the audio recording. Uh, the last audio recording I had with Andriy for the public known as uh, Pilot Fighter Juice. And it was in May 2023 when I was writing an article about F-16 and uh, he was commenting on there. And that's the recording since then. So it's just... <laughs> And he was just saying that at that, that evening when I was recording and he was saying that he was very tired. He looked tired, he sounded tired and we both know and people close to him, they knew that he was doing a part of his uh, uh, actual duty uh, flying. Uh, he was doing lots of other uh, things. He was multitasking all the time. And in this little audio, he was saying that I'm so tired after my shift and there's a lot of work. So that's how he was. And I knew him just about nine months, I think, uh, uh, before, before the tragedy. And I remember we were discussing uh, such things as defending Ukraine, as the war. And one of the moments I was uh, surprised and amazed to find out that when he was a schoolboy, he was participating in the Orange Revolution. And I remember he mentioned the fact that he was uh, uh, spreading the ribbons, orange ribbons, around Kharkiv, his hometown. Do you remember the time? Oh, of course. It was a very uh, interesting time uh, with the inspiration and hope of our people that it will be a very interesting future for them. And uh, we, they fight for the election of our president, Yushchenko. And uh, they were, were very... Uh, a very inspiring time in Kharkiv. And uh, of course, uh, Andri was uh, ten, teenager indeed. And uh, he and his uh, uh, classmates uh, visit this office of uh, Yushinka party and uh, they um, 
asked for these ribbons, for flags, and distribute all these uh, things among the citizens of Kharkiv. And one man said him, um, in this moment, uh, Andriy gave him the uh, little flag uh, of uh, orange flag, and he thought, oh, guy, it's better to give me a, um, the rifle. <laughs> Really, well, it will be better. Old. Yeah, it's, it will be better to give me a rifle instead of this flag. So it was Have such. Have you been a, surprised? Yeah. because it's quite, quite an early age, you know, yes. for that kind of actions. But it was time when the the, the feeling of struggle. Uh, was born in this the souls of these uh, teenagers indeed it's a, this a, the generation of orange revolution indeed all these guys now on the service they are now defend ukraine in different ways but it's quite strange for Kharkiv because Kharkiv was one of those places where there was a pro russian political mm -hmm. party was more supported and uh, uh, the people who were supporting the Orange Movement or the Orange Party, they were in minority. How come the, your family and Andriy were so pro-Ukrainian? Oh, maybe uh, the freedom is the spirit of our family. <laughs> And uh, it was easy for him. He uh, visited Ukrainian class, Ukrainian school. Uh, it is not. It was not usual for Kharkiv in those years. So uh, I think that the first is the role of school, and a family, of course, too. And uh, this, um, uh, he, they were close to this uh, events. It was interesting for for, for kids. It was interesting. Uh, so it was uh, the at first it was interesting for youth for students. Kharkiv is a student city. More than three hundred thousands of students in those times. So it's uh, it was uh, at first uh, inspirable for youth, and of course Kharkiv is a unique city. It's a in city of intelligence. Indeed, it's of scientists, of universities. So it's more, the city is more progressive than other cities of uh, the east of Ukraine. Interesting, you say, because now Kharkiv is known as a fortress. Yes. Because course. it's heavily shelling every day and the closest to the Russian border yeah. doesn't give you the chance for the local citizens to go into uh, bomb shelters because yes. it's like before the uh, air raids uh, signal on, the, the missiles already yeah. hitting the In targets. A few seconds and uh, they feel this sounds of these strikes. And as you know, now our children in Kharkiv, they visit the schools in uh, underground. It's a metro school mm -hmm. of Kharkiv. It's unique. For it's also a uh, nursery world. as well. So yes, the yes, so it's uh, the most safe place in the city. Uh, under the ground and uh, they, they, uh, our um, Kharkiv uh, um, government, they create this uh, this uh, shelters uh, sh schools as a shelters in the uh, on, on the ground i remember andre as a very passionate very determined and he's very he's always full of energy mm -hmm. he knows how to, how to do what to do and it's like was he like that in the childhood as well or it just grew gradually oh i think that uh, it started uh, when he lost uh, his father he became the main man, main man in the family, <laughs> the leader of the family, and uh, it was a need to defend, to protect, of to, to protect mom and uh, grandmom and the, our dog. And uh, from the, these young years, he became uh, the leader in our family, and maybe uh, the need to to defend someone. It was the, the very important for him from the, this age. So he was like little man. Yeah, yeah, indeed, little defender. So he, he, he wasn't like messing around as a, you know, like you would expect from the child, mm -hmm. no? No, so, uh, and in some moments uh, he uh, started to be interest, interested in military 
issues in military themes because uh, he surprised me in early years that uh, he liked to uh, read to, sh to see more um, vehicles and different uh, different techniques, but not weapons. How come? Uh, it, uh, he was a peaceful child. And uh, of course, the technical style of um, of his intelligence it was understandable from the ill uh, years. How? But um, because uh, his uh, dad was a designer of uh, space training systems, Soviet uh, training uh, space systems, and uh, of course, when he visited the uh, working room of his dad, uh, he saw many different drafts, uh, journals, uh, a lot of different things uh, for designer. And uh, maybe he remembered these moments because that uh, gave, gave him uh, scissors and a pack of magazines, technical magazines, and told him, Andrei, cut what you want, uh, which picture you want to cut from this magazine. And uh, let's try. And we collect these pictures to special album. And uh, even now I save it. Uh, so um, on the one on the page there are vehicles, and one, another the tractors, another the, some other techniques. So it was a like, less, less, um, like the first attempt to classify different um, technique. Uh, and to see a lot of different designs, he can uh, um, recognize hundreds of vehicles in the early age, indeed. It's only, quite unusual, isn't it? Uh, only one side on the on the vehicle, for example. What is car, car is it? He told uh, in four years, uh, um, age of four years, he told, oh, it's maybe a um, Volkswagen or Ford. From one view, uh, it was, it was surprised our <laughs> drivers <laughs> because uh, indeed um, it's a unique, uh, unique, uh, a property of his mind to understand this technique. And uh, next time it was spread on the, the uh, aircrafts or on planes because he um, can differ many thousands of different planes. How young he was when he um, discovered this passion for airplanes, for making photographs. He was part of the sporters movement mm -hmm. and he was uh, mad enough to go in the furthest possible uh -huh. um, in the middle of nowhere to discover new planes. <laughs> uh, at first, the first attempt to... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, was uh, when we uh, construct the first uh, model of uh, airplane at the age of five. He asked me to uh, help to uh, make this uh, scale model. It was a British warplane, Paracuda. Oh. Indeed. <laughs> and so it was at the age of five. I helped him to paint uh, this, uh, all this plane. And it was the first model which he made. And uh, next he asked me to buy more and more and more models and try to did, uh, do this, all these uh, planes. But uh, the result is, was not the main <laughs> for him. Uh, sometimes he um, didn't finish this work, but the process was the, mo the most important because he, uh, in every this uh, box, uh, obviously this kit for this um, um, uh, plane, uh, there was a special document which described what is this plane, what is the history, um, and uh, what is, uh, and uh, of course the main is a draft of this uh, construction of this plane. And uh, he um, watched on these documents and uh, remember many things about this uh, design of this plane and so on. So it, uh, step by step, it increased this, this uh, volume of knowledge about aviation. So um, next step was uh, uh, when um, he, uh, he had the, the older cousin in Kharkiv, he was a, um, 
he was a pilot, um, navigation pilot of uh, a plane, uh, Antonov 74, uh, of our Kharkiv aviation plant. And uh, this, uh, his cousin, Vladislav, uh, was a remarkable pilot uh, with uh, 9,000 hours of flight. Uh, they visited his crew, they visited all continents, all um, air shows. So during conversation, Andrei uh, listened to this, uh, uh, all impressions of this, uh, uh, his cousin, and um, watched different um, um, different pictures, photos, and some souvenirs from these air shows. And of course, it was very impressive for him, for teenager. And uh, even this photo in uh, when the, uh, our uh, Vladislav in the pilot uh, code, pilot uh, form, uh, uniform, uh, with this uh, uh, badge with his name, and so on. All there the, were the details uh, of image of modern pilot mm -hmm. who visited other countries, who speak English. Uh, and of course, it was very interesting for him. It was very strong friendship. And uh, they, indeed, they were brothers in different generations of age, but uh, indeed, they were brothers. They play vision games in computer. Oh, the same. I remember he was mentioning, I, um, I was asking him something about planes, you know, because as a mm -hmm. journalist, you need to understand some mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, special aspects of that. And I remember he was referring several times how it's sort of in some computer games, yes. you know, when it, there was like a stimulator. And actually that conversation with Andre made me think that all the computer games, they it's like not as bad and mm -hmm. as a parent. Uh -huh. So I sort of judge it a bit differently, you know, because sometimes uh, you can have like passion like Andre have and it's, it was very helpful for him. Of course, of course, because uh, some details of these uh, games were very realistic. And uh, the first step, and even for, for professionals, for pilots, it's uh, helpful in some moments when they try to remind something and uh, they use those games indeed. It's close to training systems for pilots. Of course, it's different, but it's simply a uh, training system for them. And he was very much into it, isn't he? Yeah. And uh, after this, uh, um, uh, uh, after the the one tragic uh, event, uh, he lost this, uh, our, uh, this cousin, uh, Vladislav. It was a catastrophic event in, in Africa. Uh, so his, uh, the, the uh, plane was shot indeed in the, during the landing in Chad. And uh, I think that it was catastrophic loss for Andri. And at this moment, I think that uh, he felt the need to continue the, this uh, mission of his brother. And I think that it was uh, his decision to, to be in aviation. So it didn't actually put him off and you didn't stop him. You know, because it's a pilot, it's always, uh, you know, it seems like higher risk than any other mm. uh, profession. Uh, it was impossible to stop him <laughs> because his behavior, his uh, character is not uh, uh, the same as that uh, mom can stop him. No, it was crazy idea because to stop him, it means uh, to stop any a, any connection, any dialogue with him. So I must to be like a co-worker <laughs> with him. You were partners in crime. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> so I help him. Uh, if he wanted to to, um, uh, to have some books or some models and some uh, this uh, computer games and so on, some equipment, uh, I um, think that uh, I'm an engineer, in fact, and um, I think that uh, equipment, indeed, it is the first need, especially for guys. Mm -hmm. uh, no dress, no <laughs> comfort, but equipment. Mm -hmm. The good computer, good photo camera, and so on. It gives uh, next um, possibility 
for his growth. And uh, sometimes when it was sad and nothing interesting, but I, um, in this moment I decided that the moment to, to bring him something new. <laughs> for the next uh, interesting things for, for the to next, keep him yeah, inspired yeah, 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 yeah. it was necessary for him I to know be that he was so determined to be a pilot and it wasn't easy for him and he mm -hmm. had to go through surgery uh, to actually being able to pass the medical uh, commission to, to pass all the exams and even this wasn't very unpleasant experience it didn't stop him either could you mm -hmm. tell more about that oh <clears throat> uh, it was a slight my peer in the both eyes uh, in those uh, times uh, uh, and uh, uh, it prevents him his uh, um, attempt to be a military student uh, cadet so he um, um, he um, started to study in other universities, in other university, in the um, civilian aviation university in Kharkiv. And it was the uh, one year of his study in this university. Um, uh, when I um, saw that he uh, um, is not interested in this, in this uh, lessons, in this lectures. Because it's civilian. Yeah. <laughs> and there is some strange atmosphere in this uh, university. It's like a post-Soviet. So it's not the same spirit what he wanted to see. Uh, so um, he, um, uh, indeed, he waited for age 18, because age of 18 uh, uh, allowed to make the surgery. Okay. So, so he sat in another university and waited for this age and uh, this spring in 2011, he told me um, during a very, very long hour conversation at night, he told, Mom, how you cannot understand? I want to be a pilot. So from this moment, I understood that I need to help him more intensively. Uh, and uh, he told me about this laser correction of uh, vision and um, I told why you didn't uh, t t tell me uh, early because we lost uh, half of a year. It was not a lot of time for this treatment and uh, it was a very intensive process. We visited Kiev and uh, this uh, one of uh, these famous uh, hospitals, uh, clinics helped them a new vision. Uh, and um, after visit of these clinics, we returned to Kharkiv with the best um, acuity of vision. And uh, he um, passed exam by exam. They have more than seven or eight different examination, physical training and psycho psychological. In the university? Yes, of course. Uh, at, besides uh, of usual <clears throat> their knowledge uh, according to the results of graduation of school, they have additional uh, examinations as the pilots. Mm -hmm. And uh, day by day, uh, he returned home and told, I passed it, I passed it. And next and next, mom, all is finished, I am a cadet. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> so it was uh, the 1st of uh, um, August uh, uh, 2011. And it was a day when we skipped from one university to another in one day, and he started uh, to to, be, to to study in the military university. When he graduated mm -hmm. and he actually uh, got became qualified mm -hmm. and uh, joined the armed forces as a, as a pilot, there was still the moment of disappointment, and he had to resign. So he left the mm -hmm. career he was dreaming about. Was it difficult for him? Or was he considering it as a temporarily and someday when things get better, he will go back? Mm -hmm. Or there was like completely change career, it's like <laughs> new life. Indeed, I told him that he uh, has not a uh, very strong health at first because he is... Uh, not uh, so strong from uh, from 
the beginning of his life. <laughs> he's, uh, it's, he was a usual uh, boy who uh, lived in the city. It's not in the village when they are so strong. So um, I felt that uh, some his uh, some his possibilities became lower, and uh, he was stressed. Uh, he was uh, was uh, um, uh, not disappointed, maybe exhausted, because uh, this uh, his military service was not the same what he expected. He expected that he will fly, but in our post-Soviet uh, aviation, there are another traditions and another style of life and uh, service. Uh, it means that they have a lot of additional job. It's not job for, for, for pilots. It's their general duties, but not. For, it's not for pilot. And uh, of course, um, it was not good, and uh, uh, many different conditions. Uh, uh, it's not only about the payment money, but not other. They, their safety, the um, many many issues uh, which need to change the law. So it was not uh, it was not simple, uh, and he talked many times. He talked, to repeat, uh, to talk to the generals that we need to to modify something, to change our conditions, to make it similar to Western conditions of uh, um, military service for pilots. And so on. So he tries many times, but they didn't respond to them and didn't change these conditions. And finally, they uh, had a five years contract after university, and when it's expired, they uh, uh, decided five pilots from one group. They decided to finish this service. Of course, uh, it's, it was not simple for them. They, um, they liked their service to fly, they were professional, young professional, um, but our post-Soviet generals um, prevent their um, modern activity and this improvement and so on. From one side, they need such guys because they have their limitations, especially in um, in international affairs when the different uh, different delegations visited uh, uh, this uh, the uh, um, air, air base. Uh, they need. They ask Andri, help us, please. You can speak English. Help us uh, in this. Uh, uh, meetings. Uh, he prepared uh, them uh, different presentations, speeches, and so on, and helped in this all this uh, process. And um, but from other side, it gave him the um, the uh, um, contacts with very important persons from uh, the air forces of other countries, especially with Americans. Mm -hmm. so, Is it was uh, before he went to America or after he visited? He visited America during this uh, service in the first period. In um, uh, at first there was a, um, uh, international very very big international training uh, for pilots, Clear Sky in Ukraine in 2018. And uh, the many countries were involved in the, the, this uh, trainings. Among them, the most powerful is American um, team. They uh, bring, bring to Ukraine a lot of equipment, all the equipment from uh, USA to our Ukraine air base. And it was a powerful training. And there were very interesting contacts, especially with American pilots, American um, commanders. And uh, it was such a strong friendship, even uh, which helped him during the war. So their contacts uh, started in this, uh, um, in this uh, training. But uh, after this training, these American friends invited some pilots, not generals, not ministers. They um, 
uh, um, invite uh, by name six or seven pilots from uh, from Ukraine to visit uh, their air base in California, in Fresno, California. It was uh, the, um, the um, uh, a base of uh, aviation of National Guard of USA. And uh, all their friends who visited Ukraine, they uh, invited them and uh, spent the time with them in California. It was a very interesting experience. They fly in, in uh, the skies of California on the um, uh, fighter jets F-15. Uh, of course, another another conditions of work, another plane, another service. Of course, it surprised and it and inspired them. So it was uh, like a dream for them. And he, exactly at this time, uh, he was named Juice. I yes. was going just to mention that because I remember he was referring that yeah. Americans called him. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he was a, only one pilot who passed this <coughs> tra uh, tradition uh, in full uh, full tradition of this naming because it was very fun. Uh, it was like a party of uh, American uh, and Ukrainian pilots during which they discussed the the character the, uh, of uh, the pilot uh, um, some um, uh, <laughs> some something uh, very special about uh, his behavior uh, and uh, they defined uh, how to name it when they take to account all this information and they propose some variants and for Andri uh, they find um, the name uh, juice because he accepted uh, didn't drink alcohol entirely didn't uh, smoke and didn't drink alcohol so uh, it was it surprised it's uh, indeed it's uh, not unusual for militaries at all um, and uh, they uh, think that uh, juice it will be the best uh, call sign for him and it was a very interesting tradition to eat the egg uh, yeah eat an egg yes is the, it raw egg or boiled egg huh? boiled not egg. boiled oh no <laughs> with this cover to eat it Indeed, <laughs> they tell that no, you cannot do it. No, <laughs> but he <laughs> did it. <laughs> it was very funny. I have seen this video of this moment. Oh, they're very interesting. So it was the only one such uh, event. Um, for maybe in future, all other uh, Ukrainian pilots will have such cool signs. According did to he like this. his nickname Juice? Because it sounds it sounds like uh, sort of like childish. <laughs> no, um, uh, this uh, call sign to tell all about him, <laughs> uh, and uh, it was indeed uh, is in American style. It was interesting. He changed different person, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah because yeah. I remember I remember our conversations about. America and UK, mm -hmm. and I shared my impressions of America, mm -hmm. and I told him that I prefer England because mm -hmm. because of some reasons, and he was very surprised. It's like, you're not fond of America, you are not big <laughs> fan of America. How come? So I, I remember in and sort of. I suspected mm -hmm. that there's one Jews flew to America mm -hmm. and a totally different person got back. Do you remember what kind, um, what kind of changes? What exactly was different back maybe, then? <laughs> maybe his changes, uh, changes were only confirmed during this uh, visit because he was prepared for it. Indeed, uh, his spirit was modern, was like American. And uh, only uh, it's, it's only confirmed indeed what he wanted to, to, to feel. And uh, as for um, as for uh, British uh, uh, air forces, there were some moments uh, when he um, at the the uh, meeting with your top top uh, pilots. Commanders. Commanders, yeah. Uh, the first was uh, in the um, ceremony of graduation in Kharkiv, near Kharkiv, when the the commanders invited your top uh, marshal 
of your Royal Air Forces. Uh, he was a veteran, he was uh, old, but he was present during the ceremony of uh, graduation of these young pilots. It was the first moment which has inspired him to be in, you know, with this very, very, very remarkable man. Um, and um, next was uh, during this uh, service in this uh, his uh, air base when you Mm, um, commander of uh, your Royal uh, Air Forces, uh, Marshal of Aviation, he visited his uh, their air base uh, in Vasilkiv, and um, he tried to um, to fly on the uh, to use the the training training system of MiG 90, uh, 29, uh, tried to fly. Mm -hmm. On the uh, on this training system, and Andre, in this moment, uh, when some uh, foreign visitors uh, were in this airbase, he wore his uh, pilot suits, uh, not usual uh, suit as for Ukrainian, this mm -hmm. digital camouflage, not a pilot suit for Western pilots. And um, he sat near your marshal during two hours. On stimulator. He, uh, yeah, yeah. He helped him to uh, use some weapons to to set some settings in this training system during two hours. <laughs> it's quite unusual, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, he told me, Mom, <laughs> I talked to Marshal of uh, Royal Air Forces <laughs> of Great Britain. <laughs> During two hours, we fly on our um, training system. It was a very interesting experience. So, uh, British too. But um, maybe um, the, um, uh, um, this work, uh, very, very um, Spiritual work during this uh, uh, trainings uh, um, in 2018 make uh, the contacts with Americans more stronger um, because uh, it was more easy, maybe, because all commanders were here mm -hmm. and he can speak with them directly, even without our commanders. So it was very helpful now in war. War. Full uh, scale invasion. I remember when uh, I was talking to him about the first days of invasion mm -hmm. and how he was prepared. And I remember he was saying that um, he knew the war is coming yeah. and he was preparing. I know he got his own weapon, he prepared the car, he, he had the money. So basically the person was preparing to fight. Yes. And that's exactly what happened on the first day of invasion, right? Yeah. And uh, not only he, but many thousands of such guys were prepared indeed in Kyiv and in other cities who was, uh, uh, who had the um, experience, uh, who had their weapons, all of them were ready, indeed. Uh, so uh, he um, expected that it will begin, but uh, in which time ex exactly, uh, it was not clear, but he called me by phone at uh, four o'clock uh, this day, the first day, and told, Mom, what happened in Kharkiv? Because uh, some explosions, some strikes are in our airfield and in Kharkiv. Did you listen something? I don't, I said, no, no, I, I didn't listen. But immediately, uh, go away. Uh, and uh, immediately, it means that it, uh, uh, during two hours, we, um, um, and our neighbors, we, we uh, leave Kharkiv, and uh, it was the right decision uh, because uh, at first it must be done, uh, all must be done uh, to help to my son uh, um, to be in his air base without any any uh, thoughts about mom. Uh, so it Not must being be being worried. Yes. Uh, so uh, I must be. Uh, in a safe place, very far from the battlefield, and it will be helpful for them, for him, and it will be good. So it was his uh, uh, decision, and I follow him and told to listen to your children. 
<laughs> um, Ghost of Kiev. Yeah. Uh, every time when I was mentioning the Ghost of Kiev, and he was specifically stressing out that he was one of those guys mm. who were flying and every time corrected me when I was saying, oh, this is Jews, ghost of Kiev. And he's like, nope, it wasn't just me. There were other guys. Mm -hmm. It was sort of like the image was created by yeah. the group, group of mm -hmm. pilots. And I remember um, uh, telling him how grateful I was for creation, this image, mm -hmm. because in the first days of war, when uh, there's like one uh, tragic news after another and how Ukraine got so quickly occupied in the first mm -hmm. very days. And the news about the ghost of Kiev was something which I was looking forward to every day, probably for the first month mm -hmm, or two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I really appreciated that. Um, did you know the ghost of Kiev at that time mm -hmm. that could be your son or one of them <laughs> is your son? How, how you found out and when you found out about this mythological oh <laughs> when i saw the the first uh, this um, post in uh, the in facebook about the host of kiev and i saw the uh, uh, photo of andri as an image of uh, um, but he was disguised of... you wouldn't recognize him you know but i know this... that this is, this is his photo I know this photo because it's old photo indeed oh okay it <laughs> for a photo made in 2019 Right. Indeed. Uh, they uh, obtained the um, um, uh, French helmet uh, to test the French helmet in their, uh, in their planes, in their fighter jets. So uh, this, was this photo of indeed uh, made in the, their fighter jets with this helmet, it only one pilot, uh, he was the only one pilot who has had the photo with this helmet <laughs> in his plane. So, uh, of course... Uh, Do you remember this... when you, you've seen it? Yes, was but, it, was it, but uh, it was so fun, <laughs> indeed, <laughs> because I understand that it's impossible. Because Andrei uh, um, uh, had the... Um, he lost the... Uh, the um, um, he uh, he wasn't, was not allowed to fly after the, this period when he didn't fly. Uh, so when the, uh, the, he finished to uh, fly in uh, the summer of uh, 2021, and after half of a year, uh, it needed to be restored, to be, to, um, and to, to do some training uh, for, to start uh, to fly after such delay, such, uh, uh, time uh, when they did not fly. So it was impossible for the first day that he fly indeed uh, over the key, over Kiev. Of course, there were other guys. But uh, even now, the visitors of uh, the, the, this, um, his grave, they tell, uh, told me that it, it was so inspired that we saw in the, the skies that our guys fly here. And indeed, it's, it was, it was why our hope, we were watching them, and it was like we pray for you, dear guys. So it's so, so inspirable. It, it was indeed the, uh, such uh, heroic image, and um, it was very lovely hero in our, our people. So we... Uh, next, uh, this image was reproduced in many different products, mm -hmm. and you saw the uh, cakes, Ghost of Kiev, socks, Ghost of Kiev, so um, banking cards, Ghost of Kiev, and how, so on. How does it make you feel? You know, because it's your child, <laughs> and you know so what's behind the curtain. And it's, so. it's uh, fast. It was very funny. Indeed, I sent him different photos of the next and next products with his <laughs> <laughs> image, the cups, the different uh, souvenirs for the future, for the museum. So they tried to collect some of these um, photos uh, of these uh, souvenirs and so on. But uh, indeed, um, um, it was not uh, good because in one moment, uh, one of their pilots uh, died. He was killed in the skies. 
and uh, our media wrote that ghost of Kiev Kiev died. It it was indeed uh, um, horrific for me to see the photo of other pilot and uh, near it uh, the photo of my son and it was written that he was killed. Mm-hmm. And uh, from this moment, uh, the our um, uh, press officer, the, the the commanders of uh, um, uh, our forces, uh, think how uh, how to replace um, this um, image, how to comment the savant, and to to- they t- started to talk this. This is a general image of a general image of all pilots. It's not only one. The ghost of Kiev is not killed, and so on. It was such period that they told to our people that it's only legend and of one people, one, one pilot, but indeed as a group, very big group of pilots of different brigades. It's not only our Kiev brigade. There were, um, uh, and indeed some, some pilots returned to the Air Force uh, the very experienced pilots, our pilots um, like like Aksanchenko and others, uh, because uh, they sit at home, they f- finished their military service indeed, but in the first moment, the first hours, all of them are returned to their air bases because uh, uh, for them it was much more easy than for younger pilots to start this uh, struggle in the skies of Kiev. Yeah, must be. So where the, it's coming from, the F-16 idea, and I know Andre was one of the advocates and mm-hmm. he was very passionate and he was tireless, you know, again and again saying that we need, Ukraine needs mm-hmm. it, the, everyone, every country uh, which can help Ukraine to get, uh, to train the pilots, to get the uh, jets o- over here. So do you remember... I know you were discussing with Andre, and I know you were supporting and inspiring mm-hmm. each other. Do you remember this moment appearing with F-16? Mm, at first, he met the F-16 in Norway, indeed. When he was a student? Yeah, he was a military student, and this, uh, during this third course of their study, they visited um, the Norway um, Royal Academy of Air Force, and at first, it was first time when indeed they visited this uh, stand of uh, F-16s and the specialists allowed them to come and to sit in this uh, fighter jets. And uh, it's, uh, we have these photos when Andres indeed sits in his plane. And of course, uh, he decided that uh, it must be something in Ukraine, uh, like in, in Western countries, because uh, it was impossible to use uh, our post-Soviet air, uh, airplanes, uh, fighter jets, long time. Um, and uh, some programs of uh, uh, upgrades of these uh, fighter jets existed, but it was uh, planned for very, very long time. Uh, for example, such program uh, was planned for 2035. It was too long when the war, full-scale war uh, started. Uh, from the first day, they lost some planes. Of course, uh, they know that it's limited number of these uh, fighter jets. And we have no chance when we can take these planes for war. Of course, our allies in nearest countries helped us and gave their old Soviet fighter jets to us, but that's not enough because of uh, many difficult, different technical limitations of these fighter jets. And it was understandable only, especially for fighter pilots, for pilots who was on front line. Every day it was risk. Uh, to be killed, and their limitations, and um, and they were disappointed that they, they cannot help to their people indeed effectively because of limitations of their weapons. And um, from the first days, 
he appealed to the friends in abroad to help, help us, give us a new, new aviation. And uh, I talked to, to, to him that uh, I told him that Andre maybe now this it's catastrophic time this war uh, and uh, this horror of this war but this is a unique moment uh, this is unique time when we can change something and uh, as for your vision I told him. Now or never. Now or never. He understood that uh, that mom, even mom, confirmed that now is the time, is the best chance to change Ukrainian innovation, because it's not a problem of only F-16. It's a problem of changes in all our military management. Because it was post-Soviet, it was our limitation. Especially, it was understandable in war, and he be began to use all these previous connections, all these relations, and started to tell in different channels, in American um, uh, tele channels, and uh, uh, they used any opportunity to be in media and to say the same, give us new equipment, give us new fighter jets, um, because we lost our friends, because we cannot help to our population to protect the skies of Ukraine. And he started in, in immediately in uh, the March of 2022, he started to talk about this problem. And uh, finally, his friends told him that um, it's um, not so successful to tell via media. It needs to visit our country and to tell the same to our uh, top uh, politicians. Uh, politicians, yes, to to tell to them directly in their eyes for the better understanding. And uh, his friends uh, did impossible thing, impossible because they invited. Again, one, two, three person in name. They invited not generals, not ministers. They invited acting pilots. And uh, with their experience of uh, struggle in war, with their understanding of this problem, and it was so successful because his friends, especially um, Mm, who have connection uh, this uh, with, with with work of uh, Congress and Senate uh, of USA? They some some uh, members uh, uh, um, they are former pilots, so they collect all this team or for, for former pilots in Congress and Senate, and uh, uh, they um, interested in this. Um, in this uh, uh, contact with Ukrainian young pilots, especially Andriy um, has had the image of totally American pilot. They were very surprised that they watching him and understood he is our pilot indeed. Like we were in our One of us. young, yes, young years when we were young. So it was so surprised that uh, he is young and he is so qualified and uh, he um, taught uh, very, very, um, very important things and he, they understood him um, and uh, it was clear, clear for them indeed that indeed we need to help them guys. Uh, so we need to do uh, all what we can to help Ukrainians because they have a vision and they have many guys such Andriy, they wait for our need in Ukraine, and we sit and we don't help them. Why? And they start to work intensively, and finally they voted for um, the um, one uh, hundred uh, how many million dollar um, for 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 training of uh, Ukrainian pilots. During so one month to Washington yeah, was yes. During one month after after this visit, they decided 
they voted to help uh, to, to start this training. Uh, and uh, indeed, this program started immediately. How did he feel? Was he inspired? Was he, uh, you know, was like uh, creating another mission for himself? Because oh. he was so restless. He was working so hard. And I know he slept like few hours, you know, per, per night because he was on one hand, there was his duty. The other hand, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's charity. And there's, yeah, yeah. He, he was like a walking press center. For yeah, Air of Force course. Of Ukraine. And <laughs> Multifunctional <I> have, <laughs> fighter. Absolutely. And... Uh, I have a feeling he really enjoyed it. And yes. I remember we were discussing sort of like some colleagues or the mm -hmm. uh, media he was represented and he was sort of like joking about it. Yeah, so he, he liked it. He enjoyed it. Oh. And he was very good at it. It was drive for him. Mm. Drive, real drive. It was very interesting. It was what he dreamed to do over, uh, all this, uh, his life indeed. Yeah, but at the same time, being on media, being on foreign media so much, it's created some sort of like media profile mm -hmm. of your son, Andri. And I know he didn't want to be seen uh, in, mm -hmm. in public the way how he looked. And uh, I was joking. It's like, if he opens his face, the next Bachelor <laughs> show in Ukraine, he will be the one. He's like, that's exactly why I don't mm -hmm. want to do. Yeah. And even in the uh, public transport, when he was visiting Kiev, he was trying to disguise himself. So what do you think about his media uh, persona? Mm -hmm. so maybe some pros and cons did you like it or you think there was oh. too much no 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 it was uh, very good and uh, uh, he was ready for it indeed uh, because uh, he was very free uh, in speech it was the tradition of their school indeed uh, and uh, they are very prepared for different discussions, for different conversations with uh, with adult persons, indeed. Uh, so he didn't afraid to speak even with presidents. So no problem. Uh, he was very confident. And uh, of course, it's not simple confidence. Of course, it was experience and very deep knowledge of the problems. And uh, he was, sometimes he was uh, like, um, uh, like um, uh, uh, he, he, he helped even to some person in Pentagon to consult, uh, to, to help them to understand some of our needs. They uh, called directly him to help, to consult. So it uh, was uh, this, this, this uh, work was indeed, uh, Uh, without any any stops, uh, so all, all day, daily and nightly, he was ready to reply to to, to consult any, anybody, and of course, uh, I think that it was was the most uh, powerful instrument to be closer to media, because his voice was hearable uh, and. Uh, Uh, many countries, uh, many our uh, very important uh, politicians understood our needs, our our um, events, our, all our situation, which is updated any any moment. So uh, it was a life like conversation with real acting pilot. It was very important. Well, yeah, Andrei was uh, very charismatic and very passionate, and he had this talent to convince, mm -hmm. to explain uh, complicated things in simple terms mm -hmm. and convince. And f as a journalist, I really appreciate when I was asking some um, technical specialties, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, and he he was able. It's like, you know, it's just like. Two plus two is four, and, <laughs> and you can you can grasp that. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it was necessary to be present in the media, and uh, of course it was necessary to, to explain something to journalists because of course they are not specialists in uh, uh, in aviation. Um, uh, so uh, if uh, if it was necessary, of course he explained these uh, things uh, and. Um, Uh, 
many many journalists, your colleagues, ask him when they prepare some some the issues for for their their media. They ask them to, to confirm something uh, about aviation, some parameters of jets, and so on. Uh, so it was uh, necessary. So of course he helped uh, and explained it. Um. The tragedy that happened on 25th of August in 2023, it's, um, as we spoke before, before this interview, and it's difficult to get the definition of this because he hasn't disappeared. Yeah. He, um, he's still in his projects and there's a heritage of course, uh, we can go and visit him on the Alley of the Heroes here in Kiev. I remember you were saying, it's, and I like the, the expression, he stayed in the sky. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because he was the person who was thinking big. Yeah. And as a, as a person who knew him, I think he was born for the big things. Yes. And he was inspired himself, but also he was inspiring and still is an inspiration for his colleagues, for journalists, for young children, mm -hmm. because you go to museum, you meet yeah, them, yes. you spread the word about your son, about this. He, he became part of, the, uh, part of the pop culture, isn't he? And uh, uh, tell about this project with Brickmania. Mm -hmm. You received the figurine of him, haven't you? Uh, yes. So we uh, try to continue many different his uh, projects, uh, and uh, one of them was uh, to create the minifigures uh, for Lego, and this uh, company, Brickmania, they create special figures and uh, kits uh, for, uh, and Lego figures uh, uh, for uh, different events for different uh, persons, so they devoted some of their minifigures to some very remarkable uh, heroes and uh, they um, started to work with Andri uh, in 2022. Uh, Andri with uh, his friends in California, they created the uh, the foundation uh, Wingman for Ukraine, uh, in which they collected the donuts from uh, Americans and uh, helped to our pilots. Uh, help to find the protective, uh, uh, protective uh, dress, uh, protective helmets, and uh, uh, many other things, gloves, and what is necessary for pilots. So uh, it was uh, easier to de do in USA, and they uh, created this uh, foundation. And um, um, this uh, company, Brickmania, uh, helped to them uh, to to collect the donates for our uh, aviators. So every minifigure, every their uh, kit for uh, of, of this company, they um, pay uh, more than 10% of this money to this uh, uh, foundation, uh, this uh, uh, Wingman for Ukraine, to help Ukrainians directly. Uh, they told that no Red Cross, no. We want to help directly to Ukrainian pilots. That's why uh, they work, work with Andriy and create this uh, minifigure Ghost of Kiev. Uh, they need, need to uh, see the equipment of pilot and they copied the equipment of uh, him uh, to make the same uh, on this fig minifigure. And after the death, uh, this uh, uh, leader of this uh, company, uh, Dan Siskin, that told that uh, we want to create uh, the individual personal figure of Jews, and they created it. Uh, and uh, recently, he sent it to me to Kiev as uh, the first first figure to mom, and uh, of course, uh, it was a great uh, commemoration. Um, and it touched me because it is like a, uh, like a rebirth of my son. Uh, and uh, this minifigure spread it in many countries of the world. 
And uh, in such manner, my son continued to visit many, continued to fly and to visit many, many countries. Um, and uh, of course, it's uh, such like another life without the presence of him, of course, uh, it is uh, many, many, many his friends feel this, that uh, nobody from Andri is, it's um, unusual when uh, he, every moment he can reply, but no replies, so, uh, no, no, no contacts. It's, of course, oh, it's um, such sad uh, side of our life now, but uh, another side that uh, we need to remind what he did, what he wanted to do, wanted to do to complete, to uh, to do something new, maybe what he liked to do, and uh, we uh, try to continue his activities, and uh, finally uh, we did many interesting things. At first. It's not like a pop culture. Um, it's like a very important uh, historical symbol for Ukraine. Uh, because we need to create our pantheon of our heroes. And who are the symbols? Of course, we have many pilots, for heroes, but... Um, the role of Andri, uh, the main, main, his role was is to improve Ukrainian uh, aviation, systemic improvement. Uh, and it was so, uh, so huge task indeed. It was task not for one young pilot. It was task for all our ministry and general staff, all. But uh, he tried to use all, all the, his uh, possibilities, all, all, all his knowledge to shift immediately, to shift our, our forces, to change uh, all uh, this, um, this uh, our activity in the war. Uh, and uh, of course now we understand that it was the root, indeed it was uh, like a golden key to our victory. Indeed, the, um, the uh, issue uh, how to get the F-16, it's not only military issue, not. Because indeed, uh, it means that, uh, that these countries, the allies, who give us this planes, party jets, they, they believe in Ukraine. They allow us to be with them. So we are included into this pool of these countries. And uh, they allow us to use these smart technologies in aviation. It means more than improvement of aviation. It's uh, the new um, understanding of Ukraine uh, in, in, politi in its political and uh, it's indeed... Uh, and even diplomatic issue, not military. Because it's changed the, the understanding of Ukraine, uh, the position of Ukraine, the state. Because the, um, if you went, if you, if you obtain this uh, aviation, it means that we have not limitations. We obtain any other weapons. Because it's the most complex. It's most difficult. Yes, it's a big thing. Yeah. But as a, as a woman, as a mother, do you feel, um, or maybe you were thinking about the moment in the future, any particular moment, for example? I know during the um, funeral, Andre's funeral, and you had this chat in front of cameras mm -hmm. with the commander of Ukrainian um, Air Force, and he promised you to take you on the ride on yeah. F-16. Is it the moment for you when you're going to think, son, we did it, it's here? <laughs> oh, it's very important for me, indeed. Um, 
uh, even I don't know how it was, uh, what it was the moment when I said him to, about to fly. But indeed, it was my um, feeling what I want to do in memory of my son, to feel what he wanted to feel, uh, to be in this, uh, in this fighter jet to, and to start uh, to fly. So I need to do uh, this flight uh, instead of him, in memory of him, to continue his life. So uh, I wait for the invitation when I'll fly on the F-16 as our commander said. How does it feel to be a mom of such son? I know, I know the, there's a media profile. I know his big achievements. Uh, Andre gave you lots of reasons to be enormously proud of himself. But as a mom, oh. it's just... Indeed, uh, we inspired one another. So it was so, uh, such collaboration, coexistence, that uh, he was not the usual son. Um, he was uh, like a friend, collaborator. And so, so we have that ma many different uh, sides of our life, uh, which are common for him and me, and understanding of their things in technical support and in other issues. So, uh, of course, I need now to listen something new, uh, some tasks for me, as usually. Uh, but now, no response. But now I need to use all my knowledge, all my experience, and to collect all people uh, which we need to, um, to involve, to um, continue his activity. He shows, uh, uh, showed us the way, how to do this, all this improvement in any areas. Uh, so we have an example. And uh, thanks to media, we have many uh, videos on YouTube. We can uh, listen and watch it again and understand something again and uh, to repeat, to try to repeat this activity now because we need to repeat it. It's very important to be present in any country to tell them about Ukraine and so on. So his activity is must be continued uh, now. It's very important for our struggle, for our victory. Yes, it's for Ukraine, as for Ukrainian society f in this fight for Ukraine's existence and independence. But as a mom, as no. just a woman, yeah. Oh, <laughs> of course, I expected to feed his uh, children, <laughs> but uh, it's not possible now. Uh, finally, um, uh, I, uh, it's inspired when I see the eyes of uh, children who is interested in aviation. Uh, like, uh, they are similar to Andri in the same age, and I want to do more for them, especially for in, in school and uh, in their aviation clubs. It's very interesting. Mm, uh, because uh, they, these kids they need to uh, hear more about uh, this hero and, uh, they, and they listen to me as a mom. It's much more easy to tell them because they can ask me uh, and I can show his pictures, his uh, something, things, something from his childhood, and it will be clear for these kids. So um, I need to, to find this new, new, new activity which allow me to think that uh, the life of my son is continuous. It's not finished. No, no, no. In one finished. sentence, how would you like Andre to be remembered. To be, to be remembered. Oh, at first, uh, all is possible when Ukraine will win. And after victory, we'll sing. But indeed, now we have some moments when we commemorate him. Uh, of course, it's maybe not usual, non-standard, because he liked uh, something original. 
even monument. It must be something unusual. Mm, and it must be something um, life. It's not a piece of stone. It must be something very, very mobile, very, very modern. Um, we will think of it, what it will be, because he was unusual guy and the commemoration must be the same. It must be something very modern and original. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you for watching this episode. I devote to Andrei Pilchikov, um, Juice, the, the person I was honored to know. And please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment. Uh, if you knew Andrei, please share your memories of him. Thank you.